Great, thank you, Mike. Uh, I'm Gina King. I am responsible for our software ecosystem and our strategic alliances. Um, if you joined us for our last session on November 7th when we did our ISV kickoff, then welcome back. Uh, very excited about our presentation today and our um, initiative, our, our revitalization with our AIX and IBM I ISCs. So joining me today, um, I have Carl Burnett, who is one of our distinguished engineers in IBM Cognitive Systems, responsible for cloud solutions. I also have Ming Christensen, who is our uh, program director, director, product manager for our some of our cloud offerings. I don't want to steal Ming's thunder, so I'll let her talk about more about what she's doing uh, in the cloud space. And then we have Ho Jose Paez, who's also one of our offering managers. You can think of that as a product manager as well for some of your spaces for um, our public cloud offerings in IBM. Uh, this presentation today, this webcast, is based on feedback that we got from our ISV community uh, back in November when we did our kickoff. And um, this was one of the hot topics that our ISV partners wanted to know about is what are the options for power systems in public cloud. So before we jump into that part of the presentation, um, hopefully I will be able to successfully advance the charts here. There we go. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how we are re-engaging our ISV, ISV community. I know we probably haven't talked to many of you for a while and um, we've just started uh, Kind of more of an intense reach out program to ISVs uh, in 2019. Uh, part of this is based on, and obviously we've had you know very strong partnerships with many of our, our ISV partners for a number of years, um, but we want to kind of take that up to the next level because of um, one, because we're hearing from our clients they want us to work more closely together, whether that's on cloud solutions or optimizing. Um, solutions for, uh, for their organization. I, I think when we drive those stronger partnerships, and this is you know, one of the reasons why we wanna, wanna make sure that um, we are strengthening those relationships and collaboration, is because when we do work together, it helps us deliver better client, uh, better value to the client, whether it's from a performance standpoint, cost savings, or you know, even helping them to deliver better or faster business results for their organizations. So part of this effort is this webcast series. As I mentioned, we did our, um, our kickoff in November, and then we took a little bit of a break as we, we know many of you were um, uh, at least in the, the Western Hemisphere and enjoying the holiday season. <laughs> so uh, we're back at it this month. Um, so we'll be doing monthly webcasts. You may actually see these in a little bit more frequency than, than just monthly. Um, because of the appetite for uh, some topics specifically around cloud um, and uh, artificial intelligence, how our ISV partners can leverage that, um, open source, and, and how you can leverage that for AIX and IBM I. So we have some topics coming up. Um, the next one will be orchestration for hybrid cloud, and that will be in February. Um, and I believe it's around February 20th, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but you will all receive an invite for that uh, as long as you've opted into our, uh, into our uh, communications. Um, for those of you that may have missed the webcast in November, it was really as part of a kickoff, we wanted to highlight, you know, here's where we're going from a strategic standpoint with our business. Um, we've seen some incredible growth. Um, in, in all areas of our business. And so we wanted to share that as well as opportunities for our, our, our ISVs to partner with us in you know, even more collaborative ways around um, you know, delivering client value, or as I mentioned, around cloud, AI, um, open source opportunities, et cetera. What you'll also see from us are monthly newsletters. So if you, um, again, if you do opt in, um, then you will uh, be able to receive our monthly newsletters that talks about some of the topics above. Um, and in addition to that, we'll take your input. So if there's anything that you would like to hear about, uh, we can specifically include that in the, in the monthly newsletters. There's also an ISV developer portal that has some great resources. I've got a couple of links in the backup that we'll share. Um, and you can, you can use that to go learn about 
you know, more about what we're doing in cloud AI, um, and even, you know, more generally what we're doing with AIX and IBMI to continue to deliver value to our clients. Um, lastly, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one discussion with us, we are happy to do that um, by request. So you'll see when we get to the end of, of our presentation today, there's an opportunity for you to, uh, to provide your contact information and we'll get a one-on-one -on -one scheduled with you. Okay, so that's uh, a bit about what we, I, I wanted to talk about um, with regard to re-engaging. So let me turn it over to Ming Christensen because I do want to get into the meat of this, um, to this presentation around our public cloud offering. Okay, so Ming, let me quickly turn it over to you. Morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Gina, for having me here. So I'll briefly talk about power systems and why power systems in hybrid multi-cloud. IBM Power Systems product team continues to fuel innovation and it extends power's leadership in performance, scalability, and security, while maintaining our long-standing position as the most reliable servers in the industry. The vast majority of Fortune 100 companies trust power systems. Top industries from banking, healthcare, insurance, to retail have been using power systems to run and manage their business for decades. And they're adopting the latest Power9 platform. But why power systems are hybrid multi-cloud? Cloud has reset IT expectations. 94% of organizations are embracing hybrid multi-cloud strategy by mixed up and public clouds. Six percent of North American and European infrastructure decision makers are planning to migrate existing apps to the cloud. And 71% of organizations are already using services from three or more clouds. So the conversation is no longer white clouds from a few years ago. Now the customers are telling us how, how to have clouds, right? How to not only have infrastructures on premise, but also want to deliver, deployed in multiple different clouds. And that's why we have power systems on hybrid multi-cloud strategy so that we can meet customers where they are. They can not only run power systems on premises, but also can, they can run it off premises as well. If they choose IBM Cloud, we have our offering at IBM Cloud as well as Google Cloud. In addition, I know many of our business partners and MSPs have been managing uh, have been providing managed services for our clients over the last several years. So that's why we want to have offerings, power systems offerings in hybrid multi-cloud. Now, I will turn it over the presentation to my colleague, Jose, to talk about our what we have been seeing, the use case, um, the value for ISVs, um, as, well as, um, as well as our power systems on IBM Cloud. Jose, I'm going to pass the presentation to, yes. to you. Okay, I think I have it. Okay, great. Hello, my name is Jose Paez. Uh, I'm the offering manager on this product, um, similar to me. Um, I will be talking about some of the, the things that we've learned from talking to a lot of our clients and, and the, the use cases that we've seen coming out from, from systems clients and the public cloud. Uh, so the first piece I'll cover is the types of personas that we've been interacting with and studying with. So we've been working very closely with our clients, and that's MSPs, CSPs, and those are managed service providers, cloud service providers, as well as ISPs. Uh, and of course, AIX and IBMI clients. I think what we really wanted to do was focus uh, a lot of our efforts. You know, in the beginning, we were talking to a lot of AIX and IBMI clients to understand what their, what their pain points were, especially if they're holding on to um, a lot of AIX and IBMI infrastructure, and, and what that looked like for our MSPs and, and, and um, CSPs going into the cloud. Now, talking to our ISP, especially the group of all of you, and, and how you can leverage this offering in the public cloud. So some of the ISV values that we've seen, uh, and, and this is also some of the client values that we've seen um, moving forward with this offering is, is you know, the on-demand access to power infrastructure. So this is really giving it a new level of flexibility and management in the cloud. So being able to to scale this IBM infrastructure in the public cloud, it's making it very easy. So for, for both my offering and Ming's offering, it's very simple to just log 
back into the uh, respective platforms and spin up an instance as, as quickly as, as uh, you know, buying something on, on let's say, Amazon uh, catalog if you wanted to go buy, you know, SOAP or anything like that. Um, uh, being able to transform your revenue stream based, um, based uh, stream based revenue, um, getting that super high tier one SLA. So 99.5. This is a, a high tier SLA of of, of, of the top tier um, data centers that some of our clients may, maybe weren't accustomed to having if they were having uh, maybe a small scale data center in house. Uh, and then being able to take all of the all of the things that they've come to know and love with power systems infrastructure and something that they've been accustomed to on prem, and then move that into into the cloud. So some of the use cases that we've seen. Uh, I think some of the top ones, I'll speak from my experience with uh, with clients and, and uh, our managed service providers and cloud service providers, is being able to test AIX and IBMI in the public cloud. So using it as a separate sandbox environment, something someplace safe for them to test all of their software. And this is true for, for any of our ISVs that also would like to have, you know, um, a safe place for their clients to test their, their environments, I'm uh, sorry, their workloads in, in a separate and secure sandbox environment. Um, again, running Enterprise power workloads is, has been the focus of this uh, product, of these products, uh, in that we are, you know, we are systems. And we know that the, the the clients that are running this um, these environments, they're they're looking for the highest tier in, in safety and security. And so when we're when we're starting this project, um, enterprise workloads was the focus, and, and we believe that ISVs, you know, also have that same focus, especially for all of their software. And then DR as as um, you know as an option in the cloud is another huge one. I think. For what we're talking about, ISV expansion in the cloud, some of the things that, that come out a lot are the, the reach and scalability of, uh, of of our cloud infrastructure. So there are a lot of, so just for, for you know, uh, talking about my offering, we do have uh, an expansion into several geos, and, and our geo expansion is something that we are focused on heavily, and that's something that our ISVs can leverage, whether, you know, it's in the U.S., or Europe, or Asia Pacific. These are places that you can use the cloud to, to push out um, uh, infrastructure to any of your clients anywhere around the world. For our MSPs, th this is just an infrastructure as a service. So we, we provide the infrastructure, and our MSPs and CSPs, they, they give it those managed services around it. So we do provide infrastructure on the cloud, but there is a lot uh, going on that a client can uh, rely on from MSPs, CSPs. SPs or ISPs to give them back a, a comprehensive cloud experience. Uh, so far, we've seen in just in the past uh, quarter, we've closed uh, on the uh, on, on the IBM cloud side. We've closed several deals uh, ranging from one to six million TCV across a couple of years, uh, and we've seen a lot a lot of traction um, and a lot of interest from our client base, uh, leaving us to actually have to go back into our our initial data centers and. Uh, refill the capacity, refill the storage. We've, we've maxed it out, we're trying to add as much as possible just from our initial uh, demand we got. So now I'm going to go into the offering itself. So my offering is called IBM Power Systems uh, Virtual Server on IBM Cloud. It's, it's a mouthful. Um, this is what happens when you have two marketing departments uh, decide on your name. So you've got IBM in there twice, so you remember where it comes from. It's self-provisioning tools, so a client can log into the IBM Cloud platform. They choose uh, what their details are, so what kind of machine they want to run it on, whether that's the S922, the E880, or the E980 that we have now available in Frankfurt. Um, they can choose how many cores they want their LPAR. So think of it as an LPAR as a service. You're, you're really picking and choosing all the pieces. Uh, for cores, you can go as granular as a quarter of a core, up to 143 cores if you've got the enterprise machines, uh, whether that's dedicated or shared, so you can choose that option. Uh, memory, we had initially slated it for uh, 8 to 64 gigabytes per core, but now since we started to see a lot of different demands, especially on the IBM I side, that uh, memory is so flexible that that range has actually expanded. So I'll, I'll do my best to update that, or if you have any other questions, I can uh, talk afterwards. Uh, we do have uh, storage, so the FS9150 um, is now what we have available in Frankfurt. We also have the V7000 fiber attached storage. Uh, and, uh, and we have the operating systems, of course, AIX and IBM I, keeping uh, a base image of uh, 7273 for AIX and uh, 727374 for IBM I. Uh, these are the base images that we have. Of course, a client can go in and bring their own image. So if they have uh, an image that they've been working on, they can, they can roll that into the cloud easily. So this is consumption-based pricing. A client can 
again, customize their LPAR with all these details, and then they're just charged by the hour of usage. So if they have a small LPAR, they want to run it for an hour, they can turn off and delete that LPAR, and they will no longer be built for that LPAR. So it, it is giving uh, the, the idea of uh, power systems infrastructure at a level of flexibility that a lot of our clients haven't been accustomed to. Uh, the data centers that we have active right now are Washington, D.C., Dallas. Uh, we got live in Frankfurt, and we're doing next for uh, London, and then followed by Toronto, and then Asia Pacific. So um, this is just a quick series of slides to show you how easy it is. So if you go to cloud.ibm.com, uh, you'll, you know, if you've already got an account, you'll log into the catalog. If you don't have an account, it's really simple to log in. They even give you some credits to, to kind of mess around with. Uh, so if you log in there, you search for power systems at the top bar, and you'll see this fun little spinning icon, and that'll be uh, this offering. So you go into what it looks like here. This is us provisioning an offering, again, naming the offering, how many instances you want to create, what machine type, how many cores, and that price is dynamic on the side. If you are interested on in what the pricing looks like, feel free to send me an email, and I can give you back the pricing calculator that we have. So if you want to mock up some LPARs and see what an environment costs on the cloud, that's something that we can totally do, and, and, and I can even help you uh, walk through that, that uh, pricing estimate. So I'm going to pass it back over here to uh, Ming so she can cover the IBM Cloud side. Take it away, Ming. Thank you, Jose. So I'd like to talk with everyone about IBM Power Systems for Google Cloud. It is a power infrastructure as a service offering. It is created by IBM Power Systems and made available on Google Cloud Marketplace or GCP Marketplace. Client can use this solution to deploy, manage, and consume power virtual machines connected to GCP. Virtual machine management is provided by Google Style Experience. They can use APIs to manage power virtual machines. If a client knows how to use G Cloud, they can easily learn how to use P Cloud. We basically design these solutions, both Jose and I design these solutions to the public cloud. So when you use our power system in GCP, the experience is going to be very similar to when you use um, other native solutions on GCP. Now, next point, uh, what is client buying? So IBM Power System for Google Cloud is a capacity-based monthly subscription model. The unit of uh, subscription is a cloud instance plan, which is a collection of compute, memory, storage, and network resources. GCP Marketplace invoiced a client a monthly subscription fee at the end of each month. Partial months are prorated, and there's no minimum term commitment or upfront payment. So different from what we have in IBM Cloud, this offering is, yeah, the client subscribe to capacity, then they can provision and partition into many power virtual machines and the same rule follows the minimum virtual machine size start at 0.25 cores. And uh, as uh, many cloud plans, uh, customers, if you use 15, 15 days for this month, GCP will prorate it to that 15 days based on number of days you use. Set. Now, next point, uh, what does IBM do? So IBM manage and supports up to the OS deployment and the client self-managed the OS and up. So basically for ISVs, you will be responsible to loading up the, uh, the applications you have to do development or have your clients load applications you have on these cloud. The power system for Google Cloud offers and support AIX. The same infrastructure can be supported for Linux and IBM I. AIX is available today, and we're working on to make IBM I available uh, uh, very quick, very soon uh, on Google Cloud. So the offer includes right to use license to run AIX operating systems with support in support, uh, entitlement uh, for the current supported AIX versions. Clients can bring their own OS images or select one of the stock OS images. So when we design the solution, we certainly have the ISV as well as the end customers in mind because that's what customers run. So we designed this to, de to uh, deliver clients a hybrid multi-cloud experience with the same infrastructure capabilities they're running on-premise. 
So the traditional power workloads, such as DB2, Oracle, SAP, WebSphere, and the various applic uh, ISV applications they run on-premise, they can run on these solutions on cloud today. So the last point before I turn it to Carl is a, a key strength about this offering is this private and low latency network. So with this built-in, it brings three notable benefits. First of all, power infrastructure has less than one millisecond network latency to and from GCP. This low latency is very important for ISVs because some of them, this latency is, uh, is, is a key requirement for certification. So we designed this with this in mind. And second, the networking between GCP and power infrastructure is private and secure. So all the power infrastructures are behind GCP firewall. As a result, the power virtual machine IP addresses are private and internal to the client by default. And clients have full control on how to make these power virtual machines accessible. For example, they can use GCP project, app servers, or SSH jump servers, VPN, neat gateways to make those available. And if they choose to uh, use GCP Direct Connect solutions, they can always also do it too, but it's certainly optional. And uh, the third strength is the cloud instance are connected into a target GCP project by using Google VCP peering technology. This connectivity enable solutions spanning power infrastructure as a service and GCP services. So that's the beauty of this one. Instead of a siloed, a colo solution, what happens is clients can not only run their favorite applications, for example, you know, one of the ISV applications on power system, they can also run uh, app servers uh, on GCP. So, this page is a uh, as whole of our product landing zone. And this link here is a live link. If you click on it, it will bring you to the product page. It's publicly available. You will be able to learn a lot more about what the product is, how to use the product. Make sure to check out our documentation. We'll have a the documentation page. In addition, you will see two cloud solutions. And you may get concerned that these are not the, the plan you're looking for. These are just samples we'll put on the GCP marketplace. If you're interested in a customized size, please contact me or uh, use this uh, address, uh, this uh, Google group before, uh, on the page here, and I'll be able to work with you to customize, uh, customize your cloud capacity so that you can provision uh, many VMs uh, based on your workload need. Now I'm gonna turn the, uh, the control to Carl, so that Carl is our chief engineer, um, distinguished engineer and chief architect, so that he can talk with you about the technical solutions across both uh, offerings. Hey, go, Carl. Thank you, Ming, and hello, everyone. So I'd like to give you some insight into our technical solution approach. And as Ming just noted, we have built a common solution architecture for power attached to public clouds, and we've used it um, in both of these offerings that have you know, been described to you today. Uh, so let me start with the hardware and actually what's inside um, the offering. Uh, so we've actually based this on our latest generation of Power9 uh, servers, and it's based on our Power VM servers. So for those of you that are familiar, this would be systems like S922, E950, E980. It's that class of systems. It's our enterprise-grade servers. Uh, we surround that, those servers, with uh, fiber channel-based storage infrastructure uh, that has flash technology included within it. And as Jose mentioned, we're using IBM storage technology. And then we surround that with a high-speed SAN and high-speed networking. Uh, around that hardware infrastructure, we leverage our you know, power VM infrastructure to its full resilient capabilities. We deploy multiple VIOS instances. We're using MPIV storage models, and we use our cloud management stack under the covers, um, notably PowerVC, to provide an open stack management model on which we build the upper level user experience. 
key point about this chart is what we've built um, within our offerings is consistent with what our customers run on-prem and what you as ISVs are familiar with in your testing and certification of our products. Um, and that is intentional to make this our full enterprise grade infrastructure consistent with what customers run in their own data centers. So that's a little bit about the hardware. We call that hardware infrastructure footprint a pod. That's just a, uh, you know, a collection of racks that has you know, these components um, within it uh, put together into a large pool of resources that we can then you know, allocate subscriptions out of. So that's the hardware. Next, I'd like to give you a little sense of, of how we actually connect all this together and how we de deliver the cloud experience for you. So on the right side of the di diagram, we start with that hardware infrastructure footprint that I just um, talked about. And we connect that into the public cloud platform over a low latency, high speed interconnect. On top of that fabric, we start to build uh, logical networks for management and what we call data plane networks. So over the control plane network, we've actually built a whole new user experience for virtual machine lifecycle management uh, of the power service. It starts with a microservices based uh, model it actually runs on a, a Kubernetes cluster inside of the public cloud platform. And on that, we build a open API compliant REST API for virtual machine management. This includes uh, all the typical operations from creation to deletion of a VM, along with storage volume management, image management, and management of networks that are used in the solution. On top of that API, we build a web console and a command line experience that we align to the look and feel of the public cloud that the solution is attached to. So if you're running this on IBM Power Virtual Servers, you get an experience that's aligned to IBM Cloud. If you're running it with GCP, you get an experience aligned to the GCP look and feel for their web console and their command line model based on G Cloud. Once you have your virtual machines created uh, using this new easy to use management interface, you need to access them and, and start you know, building workloads out on them. For that, we offer a data plane network that connects your virtual machines in your cloud instance or in your virtual machine you allocated in power virtual servers uh, to attach that to your cloud resources. And that can be you know, x86 compute, cloud storage, analytics, so you can build a workload that spans cloud resources and power infrastructure resources as part of your overall solution. Uh, so again, I'll emphasize it's designed to be an infrastructure or an enterprise grade model with a look and feel cloud experience for uh, management and the ability to combine cloud and you know, power to help customers modernize their overall workload footprint and take advantages of resources in the cloud. So that's a little insight into our solution of uh, technical approach. And as Gina said at the beginning of the session, we definitely would be interested in talking with you one on one if you like to you know, go deeper into the solution and answer any questions you might have. Uh, to, to sort of finish out, we've left you with some information resources um, around the two offerings we've talked about today, as well as Jose and Ming's contact information. Please feel free to reach back out to them. Uh, the links we've provided are to the marketplace uh, spaces for the two offerings, as well as the documentation sites. I think you'll find this useful in understanding how you use the offerings, how you bring workloads from on-prem to the cloud, uh, so please take a look at that. It's, it's all public information. And then we've got a couple of videos you can look at to give you some you know, deeper insights into the two offerings. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Gina, who's going to you know, give you some additional information about our webinar series and our plans. Great. Thank you, Carl. Uh, we also are planning to leave some time at the end of this session to answer questions that you have. We've had a few come in that I know have been answered, but I, um, I think it might be good if uh, you know, other attendees may have those questions. So as Carl mentioned, there, there are a number of resources or 
you know, we, if you have questions about IBM Public Cloud or Power Systems for Google Cloud, you've got um, contact names for Jose and Ming, um, as well as uh, some links to, to getting started. I did want to point out a couple of other resources on the bottom of the page, and I, I did mention the IBM uh, Power Systems Developer Portal. And there are some great resources out there related to hybrid cloud and also related to the IBM Cloud Virtual Private Cloud on Power. <laughs> so um, if, you, if you want more information on those or, or even more details, it's a great resource. Um, let me just go to the next chart here. Um, I did want to take a few minutes to talk about some additional partnerships, uh, partnership opportunities uh, with our, for our ISVs. So we, we generally get a lot of questions about, well, how do we get access to, to hardware? Um, we do offer free access, um, and you can request access. Um, it's through our Client Experience Center. Um, there's a hyperlink, which you'll be able to access through the, the PDF download of these charts. Um, to, and it's 24 by 7 support. We also have, or access, I should say, um, with support, if you have challenges, questions, need help getting set up, then um, we have a whole team that can help you with that. Um, in addition, we also have application modernization workshops. So we know as um, we've been working with our ISV partners, your clients are asking about cloud options. Um, they may be asking, and this is part, this relates back to part of our, our um, our uh, webinar, webinar series um, schedule as well. Um, we know that you're getting questions about cloud. We know you're getting questions about how to leverage open source and, and even artificial intelligence, so machine learning, deep learning uh, applications. And in the conversations that we've had with, with many of our ISV partners, either you have your own um, uh, AI solutions that you could run on power and see some advantages, um, or uh, we have a whole portfolio of offerings and even partnerships with some of the leading ISVs in the, the AI space that you could leverage um, with your applications as well. So the application modernization workshop is uh, available to you at no charge upon request, and, and you can reach out to, to me. Um, and, and there's also a link here to get you some more information as well. And we want to partner with you, right? This gets back to what I said um, when, at the beginning of our, our webcast today about our partners wanting us to work together to, um, you know, to deliver value to them. Right. So, um, so in the spirit of that, you know, this, these are one on one workshops that we can do with you to kind of map out the strategy for, you know, how we deliver that client value together. Um, and that also relates back to the complementary AI assessments, which are, are part of that as well. Um, there are also market development funds that are available and uh, with our strategic partners, we uh, we do joint events. We can work on joint marketing collateral. Um, for those of you who, I, I, probably many of you are aware of this, we have worldwide technical universities. So they're in every geography, and that's a great opportunity for us to get out to our mutual clients. Um, in addition to that, obviously very key to, to make sure that we're getting our joint solution out to market. So. Um, we have sales enablement engines within IBM to get out to our sellers, whether those are uh, direct sellers or through our channel. And we have the opportunity to do uh, tech talk demos and training so we can get into more of the kind of technological aspects of, of uh, our ISV partner applications and, and um, you know, those integrated with our, our hardware systems. Uh, partnership videos, webcasts, and obviously opportunities to co-sell. Um, so that's generally kind of a model that we see that works well with our, with our ISV partners. So a lot to take advantage of. Um, I did want to mention again the webcast series that is, um, is coming up. So that was, you know, toward the beginning of, of, our, um, of our presentation today a link to the webcast that we did on the 11th and that, or sorry, the, uh, on November 7th, and that laid out kind of our overall strategy and touched on 
cloud at a very high level. So, you know, we've obviously gone deeper into that today. Um, I do, before we open it up um, and start, I, I, we've got, like I said, we have some questions that have been coming in through the chat. And so I wanna make sure that we have ample time to answer those because I, I think it'll be valuable to all of you. Um, before we do get into that, something that will help us both craft our offerings, I think in a, in a better way, um, or drive what that roadmap looks like, as well as you know what content we deliver in future webcasts, we do have a quick survey that we'd like to do. Um, and Mike, I think that's coming up from your end, um, and then we'll jump into some of the questions, but let us do that short survey and again, none of this gets shared. We only use this internally. You'll see the poll questions that should be popping up for you right now. And we'll give you a, a few minutes to answer those questions. Again, you know, we're only using this internally to help drive content or you know, to as input into our offering roadmap. And thank you for those of you who, uh, who took the time to, to provide the feedback, those questions. Okay, um, what, just one last reminder, um, and I mentioned this toward the beginning of our webcast, I'll just mention it again quickly. Uh, our next webcast is set for February 20th, so I did confirm that date, set for February uh, 20th, and it's a deep dive into orchestration for hybrid cloud. So um, Joe Cropper, who is our technical lead for our hybrid cloud solutions, will be delivering that webcast, so make sure you Got that in your calendar um, for February 20th. Okay, excellent. So let me let me jump over, and I think we've got um, some time for questions here. So let me just go through some of these, and um, I'll ask the technical team to to ask. I know we did get a question about the the charts, um, so the the replay and the link will be available to you. You should have that through us by email. Um, some of the other questions that have come in that I think will be relevant for, um, for our attendees today, um, we have a question about what regions the, um, the public cloud services are available. So May and Jose and Carl, feel free to, to jump in here too, but it, um, Jose, if you can talk to public cloud and Ming, I think they didn't, it wasn't specific whether or not it was for Google, but that would be helpful to know as well. Uh, so for IBM's, IBM Cloud offering, we are live in uh, Washington, D.C. and Dallas, and uh, now in Frankfurt, and then we're going to be moving into London, followed by uh, Toronto. We've got Asia Pacific and Latin America. Okay, excellent. So for the power systems offering for Google Cloud, currently we're available in the U.S. East, and uh, we're working to extend it into another region, and it most likely will be in the U.S. Central. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, all right, moving right along here. Um, next question that I think would be helpful for uh, our attendees uh, and relevant, I think, to the, uh, everyone who's on the call. Um, how do we license AIX, IDMI, and Linux on power for the power systems in the cloud? Jose, maybe that's a good one for you. Yeah, so uh, the licensing, and I, and I think I, I had responded to somebody earlier. So the, the way we're doing it is when you provision a new instance, you select either AX, IBMI, uh, the cost of the license is actually bundled in with the purchase uh, for that instance. If a client wants to bring their own image, let's say they have an AIX or IBMI image on-prem and they want to move that into the cloud, they can do so. Uh, but they will pay for uh, for that license in the cloud. Yeah, and Jose, maybe this is Carl. Maybe just one thing I'll add is not only is that a license to run you know, those operating systems, but it's an entitlement to support as well. Yes, that's I, very good. And it's similar to Google Cloud, as uh, when the sub customer subscribes the plan, that basically includes everything. That means. It has compute, memory, network, storage, and right to use AIX license and the support associated with the entire stack, right? So um, there is no additional charge, at least for the powerful Google Cloud offering, there's no additional charges for uh, network. It works by default, 
and uh, um, in, in addition, um, the support is included. And sometimes customers always ask, what is the data charge? In general, data ingress is made of public clouds are all zero dollars. And uh, for this particular solution, the data egress is free between GCP and power systems within the same region. So all that's we all architected within the same solution. And one thing to add is I think both Jose and I forgot to mention is both offering with design with ISVs and enterprise class customers, you know, in mind so that we have one support and one billing. So customer receive one billing from IBM as ISVs as well, right? And uh, the usage is, you know, as, as one of the line items. And for support, we certainly don't want to get customers to drive into multiple places. So we have one support policy too. So customers, you would contact the public cloud, either IBM cloud or Google cloud for the offerings. And we work behind the scene so that eventually, if it's a power systems problem, it gets routed through power systems to uh, solve your issues. And as typical, uh, AX, for example, the 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 uh, fix, fixes. You can go to our support page to download the fixes. Okay, excellent. Okay, that's that's good additional information to know. Um, okay, very good. Um, okay, there's also a question. Let me just find it here. I had it a moment ago. Um, for IVMI. Um, workloads, what are the processor groups that are available in the cloud today? Um, Hello, so I think I can answer that. Thanks, I think for, for, um, for the processor groups, for, it's based on the hardware. And right now we've got the, uh, the S922, the E880, and the E980. I believe that is the P10 for the S922s, and then the P30s are the enterprise class. Okay. Excellent. All right. Very good. Okay. Um, all right. Moving along here, we've got some great questions. Um, what What are the requirements for access to t to the test environment? So we we have an ISV um, who's asking this question um, and have some requirements to test in the cloud. Um, they already have SAN for internal systems for test and development, um, but they would like to build an image for a client for deployment. So is there, uh, and I know we did have um, some contact info or, you know, contact information and in getting started. Um, so Jose, is that, is that one that they could specifically reach out to you to get, to get started? Uh, I'm sorry, could, could you repeat um, that again? Yeah, sorry. They, they're, they want to know what the requirements are for, um, for getting access to, to test environments. To test environments. So, uh, yeah. if they're an ISP uh, and they, they want to set up an image for a client for deployment. Right. Uh, so if they want to set up an image for a client, so if, they, if they've just purchased an instance, they can purchase it through the IBM Cloud Catalog. But if they'd like to do a POC, so a, a proof of concept, they can work with their rep to set up one of the promos. So for, for mine, it's called a 20 for 2, which is um, it, it gives the client, business partner, uh, or ISV 20K in credits or two months of usage. So you can kind of mess around with that and see how it would work for you. And I think on the Google side, you get one month of free, uh, for free with commitment to pay for a second month in 1Q2020, uh, depending on capacity availability. So there, there, are promo, there are promo options available uh, if, if, you, if you do want to try it out at a larger scale. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Jose. Sorry, there, I, when I read the question, I don't think I was completely clear. <laughs> so thanks. Uh, I think we worked through it. Hopefully, that didn't answer the question. Um, Ming, I have one here for you that I, um, if you can address, if, if, uh, so if a, if an ISV or a client is using Google Cloud, uh, or I, I, let me just read the, the answer or the question. If they're in the Google Cloud, um, do do customer and they need support? Do they work through Google or do they work through IBM um, in, if there's an issue? What does the support model look like? Yes, we, it's a one support model. Um, they can contact Google Cloud, the GCP for support first. They will, they will take care of all the level one support. And uh, if it's truly a problem with the power system, they work with us behind the scene. 
So we create this uh, channel so clients don't have to make five different phone calls to figure out exactly where the problem resides. So we've been testing out the process and working pretty seamlessly. Okay. Yeah, and Ming, let me add to that a couple of things. So um, for everyone in that, the, the, that documentation link we provided, there is an article called How to Engage Support. So you can understand how the support process works, where you actually go in the GCP portal. And as part of these plans, we do allow for the operating system customers to directly engage IBM. If you believe your problem is, uh, for example, an AIX problem, there is a way for you to directly engage the IBM support process, just like an on-prem customer would um, if you know, they felt they had an operating system issue. Okay, that's excellent. right. We have a sort of door available. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, um, there is a question, and I don't, I don't want to go into into too much detail about this because we'll we'll cover it uh, on one of our future webcasts. And and by all means, my contact information is um, on the front. This is Gina King, by the way. Um, but my contact information is on the the front of the uh, or at the beginning of the presentation. Um, but there are questions about our AI solutions and um, how we can leverage those as part of this offering or um, even with our, um, uh, our AIX uh, and IBMI um, ISV applications. Um, I'll ju I will just briefly uh, kind of give you an overview of, of what we'll be talking about on the upcoming AI webcast, and that's still to be scheduled. Um, but we have a product called um, Watson Machine Learning Accelerator um, that can that can be used in conjunction um, with AIX and IBMI. Um, so it can it, the it can leverage the data that's in in those systems um, to perform more perform machine learning um, deep learning operations. Um, in addition to that, I'll just I'll just again talk very high level and very quickly about this. We have a product called AI Vision um, that we're seeing um, uh, and just some of the use cases. We're seeing clients in manufacturing or even real estate or insurance who are leveraging um, AI Vision, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in manufacturing to detect, you know, issues with products um, for quality control and, you know, things of that nature. Um, and that's very complementary to to some of our clients that are, are using applications for discrete manufacturing. Um, for example, we also have a very strong partnership um, in our ISV ecosystem with a with a company called H two H two O AI um, that is um, in the machine learning space and. Um, some of the use cases we're seeing there are in the banking industry um, where clients are using, again, you know, years of data that they've collected. There are a lot of rich insights in that, in that data that they can then leverage for you know, customer loyalty or fraud detection. So there are a number of use cases we see there. So um, again, I didn't want to steal all the thunder from the, the AI presentation that we'll, be have, that we'll have, you know, coming up soon. But if you are interested in those applications that you know work with AIX and IBMI, please you know feel free to reach out and we can go into some additional detail there. Um, okay, let me just go back and look at some of the other questions here. Um, bear with me just a minute. Oops, sorry, my my uh, my Q and A window just froze. I think we've actually covered quite a number of these. I do know that there are questions that we're, we're seeing coming in um, about the pricing calculator. And I know um, uh, Jose and Ning can help specifically with that. Again, you know, if it's on the IBM public cloud side, um, you can reach out to Jose. And then for, for Google Cloud, you can reach out to Ning. Okay, just gonna take another quick look here to see if there are any that we've missed. And if you do have any additional questions, you can, um, you can add those to the, the Q&A box. Okay, um, all right, one, let's see. I think Ming, you answered the question about um, business partners and, and the certification process there. Um, right, right. Just, AI. 
Yeah, I think that's a good question for everybody. I, from the power system side, if you're already existing power system business partners, you can absolutely resell and create value-added solutions for both offerings. Really, now there's no additional uh, channel requirement uh, from the IBM side. That goes for both offer, uh, both solutions. Okay, excellent. All right, good to address there. Okay, I, um, I'm just scrolling through. I think that we have gotten to most of the questions here. Um, and if you do have follow-up questions, again, our contact information is available. You know, please don't hesitate to reach out. And um, you know, if you if you do have some additional questions, or again, if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussion to go deeper into, and I, I don't want to have everybody. You know, if you do have questions about AI and you don't want to wait for the webcast, <laughs> it can be one of the one-on-one -on -one discussions we do with you to go into a deep dive. But uh, I do want to extend that offer again. We're here um, to support you in your your journey um, with Power Systems. And uh, so we're, we're here as a resource and have a lot, of, uh, a lot of areas that you can take advantage of to help modernize your, your applications and help deliver value to your clients. So I think we've gotten through. Um, okay, if the link, uh, just one more, one more question here. Um, if, if the links are not working, um, that there is a PDF. Um, file that sh that you will have uh, access to in addition to the the webcast recording, so you will be able to access the links through that PDF. So, okay, with that, I would um, like to thank everybody again for attending today. Thank you for your time. We know it's precious, um, and appreciate you allocating some of that to learn about our cloud solutions. And a big thank you to Ming, Jose, and Carl for joining us today to walk us through. Uh, our offerings in, um, in IBM for public cloud. Okay, excellent. Thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic day.